Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss Trust Services Criteria, TSC. In the prior session, we learned about Type 1 Report, Type 2 Report. For the sake of a review, I'm going to go over Type 2 Report. And if we go, if we understand Type 2, we don't have to go Type 1, but Type 2 will make the point that's going to help us understand trust service, trust the purpose of Trust Services Criteria. Type 2 Report will cover a period of time, okay? And... In a type two report, the man we, we look the management description, the management makes a claim or just shows us a description, detailed description of the system as designed and implemented over a specified period. The management makes a claim, an assertion, asserts that the description fairly presents the design and implemented system over the period, and controls were suitably designed and operated effectively to achieve the control objective. So basically, management is they you know they tell us the description and they make a claim that the description fairly presented fairly present the design and implemented system over the period. So they said this is the design and it's implemented. Our job our job means the auditor's job, is to provide an opinion on the fairness of the system's presentation and suitability of the control design and, because this is SOC 2, operating effectiveness, including a description of the control test. As an auditor, what we have to do, we have to issue an opinion, and this is a type 2 report, specifically about the operating effectiveness, about whatever system we are looking at, detailed description of the system. That's fine. So we're looking at type two, type two report. Now, when we looked at type one and type two report, we have, they are issued for either SOC one, SOC two, or SOC three. So SOC one, we have type one and type two. For SOC two, we have also type one and type two. And for SOC three, we only have type two. So I'm, to illustrate the point, I'm going to talk about SOC 2 type 2. So under SOC 2 type 2, because SOC 1 doesn't apply trust service criteria. Why not? Because the topic that we cover in SOC 1 is internal control over financial reporting. The company is making a claim about internal control over financial reporting. So SOC 1 does not does not apply to what we are discussing here. We're going to come back and talk about SOC 1 in a different setting. But when it comes to trust services criteria, we're talking about SOC 2. SOC 2, the primary focus of the report, or the primary focus of the engagement, is security, availability, processing integrity, confidentiality, and privacy. Those are what we call the trust services criteria. So what happened is this. When we audit, we issue a report. And that report, the auditor's report, is about, the opinion is about the fairness of those criteria, system availability, processing integrity, confidentiality, privacy, the TSCs. So what are those then? Those are criteria. And what is a criteria? Think of when we conduct an audit, a traditional audit. So when we conduct a traditional audit, we issue an opinion. We issue an opinion whether the financial statements whether the financial statements are fairly presented, are fairly presented according to a certain criteria. And I hope you remember from basic auditing, according to generally accepted accounting principle, assuming we're in the US. Now, if we are international, according to the framework IFRS. Now, when we issue a SOC opinion, SOC 2 opinion to be specific, we need a criteria. And what's the criteria? It's the trust services criteria. That's why we need to learn about trust services because we need to issue an opinion. We need to issue a SOC 2, either type 1 or type 2. And those either type 1 or type 2, when we conduct an audit, the audit has to be, we, we, we need a measurement, we need a framework. And this is where the trust services criteria comes into place. This is why we need to learn about trust services criteria. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So, what is the purpose of the trust services criteria? There you go. 
the TSC provide a standardized framework that practitioners use to assess whether the controls in place are adequate and effective in protecting the aspects of the information system that are critical to the reliability and security of these systems. So we need a framework. What are we going to use? The trust services criteria now. Who issues those trust services criteria? Hold on a second. It's going to be an organization you're pretty familiar with. But hopefully we know that they are a framework, a measurement tool. Again, think of it's a measurement tool. Think of GAP. GAP is a measurement tool. The trust services criteria are a measurement tool. And this is important for organization because if you need to demonstrate the robustness of the control environments to stakeholders, to people who are interested in your report, to your clients, to regulatory bodies, you need this tool. You need to tell them, look, I, my, my, my company is secure and I used the trust services criteria to measure my claim. Then the auditor will do what the auditor will assert will 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 attest to this claim whether your assertions are you know true or not so trust services criteria are established by the AICPA great specifically the AICPA's assurance services executive committee so trust services criteria they are trusted because it's the from the AICPA are designed to guide entities in creating and implementing controls. So you would follow the company would follow those trust services criteria that's going to mitigate inherent risk to their internal system. The assumption is, is those risks, if not properly managed, could hinder your ability to meet your objective. And what are those trust services criteria? We're going to look at them. We're going to look at each one of them separately. Security, privacy, confidentiality. We're going to look at them separately. So the trust services criteria outline specific outcome that an entity's control should achieve to ensure they are effect they effectively support the entity's control. So they have to achieve a certain outcome, specific outcome. And because they outline specific outcome, we can measure to see whether they meet this outcome or not. And this is particularly important in SOC 2 and SOC 3. Remember, SOC 1 deals with internal control over financial reporting. So SOC 1 has nothing to do with trust, trust services criteria. So this engagement focus on evaluating and reporting on the controls surrounding the security, availability, processing, integrity, confidentiality, and privacy of the entities informations and systems. So SOC 2 and SOC 3 deals with those trust services. Now, practitioner can base the report on one or more of these five trust services category. So when you engage, you don't have to report on all five. You could report on one, you could report on two, you could report on three. For example, in, in the case of cybersecurity, we'd look at that. So the report doesn't have to be based, you have to report on all of them. You, you may, that's going to be a lot of work, but you can report one, two, or any combination of them. Now, let's talk about each one of them separately. There are five of them, and we mentioned them here. We're going we're gonna to look at privacy separately, confidentiality, processing integrity, availability, and security. So it's very important to understand what each one entails, starting with confidentiality. This criterion ensures that information deemed confidential is protected according to the organization objective. What is confidential? It means no one else, uh, only the appropriate people should see this information, no one else. So confidential information could include a trade secret, intellectual property, business strategy that are important for maintaining your competitive edge. For example, a law firm uses encrypted data storage and restrict access to sensitive client document to ensure that only authorized personnel can view, view them, thereby meeting its confidentiality objective. So, for example, a company, this law firm, could engage their auditor, say, I want you to issue a SOC 2 report about the confidentiality of my information system or my data, and will be about confidentiality. So, let's look at availability. This criterion focuses on ensuring that information and system are accessible and usable for operation as needed to meet the organization objective. 
is your information is your system available when need be so either customer can access their data the employee can access the information so we can get work done this include maintaining hardware performing necessary upgrade and defending against denial of service attack against many things making sure your system is available for example an e-commerce company like farhatlectures.com implements a redundant server and network architecture to ensure that their online store remain operational during high traffic events like black friday sales how would you make sure that's the case well someone you will engage an auditor tell them look i want to issue a SOC 2 or a SOC 3 report either type 1 or type 2 about the availability of my system they will go ahead and they will perform this engagement integrity or processing integrity this criteria ensure that system processing is complete valid accurate timely and authorized supporting the entity's objective efficiently without errors or omission. I mean, those terms are self-explanatory. Complete means all the all the transaction being processed. Valid means it we're, we're processing transaction for actual transaction. The transaction are accurate. It's being done on a timely basis. And authorized, only transaction that's authorized are being done. And that's supporting the entity's objective without any errors or omission. For example, a bank transaction processing system is designed to ensure that all transactions are automatically logged, reviewed for accuracy, and processed on the same day they are made to maintain financial integrity. Well, what, we, what do we do? We issue a SOC. We, we may engage a company or our auditor says, our auditor, to issue engagement SOC 2 type 2 report about processing integrity. Or on all the other three it does not matter but i'm just keeping repeating the examples again and again so it kind of start to make sense privacy this involved the proper handling of personal information throughout its life cycle including how it's collected used retained disclosed and disposed of in alignment with the entity's objective and privacy policies that's another Criteria, for example, a healthcare provider uses a secure system to manage patient record, ensuring that personal health information is accessible only to authorized medical personnel and is deleted securely when no longer needed. So this is what privacy, another criteria of TSC. We might engage, our auditor says we want a SOC engagement and we want a report about our privacy. We claim that we are doing all of this. Could you engage? And we'll talk about the engagement later and issue a SOC 2 report giving assurance to whoever need this assurance about our privacy. And trust services security. Here we're going to spend a little bit more time. This category covers the protection of information and systems from unauthorized access, disclosure, and damage. So security is crucial okay, to maintaining the trustworthiness and reliability of the system and the data. If security is not maintained, all the others are useless. So if outsiders, you know, uh, threat actors, hackers can access your system, you don't have the proper security, forget about the privacy, forget about the confidentiality. Think of that security as a gate that surrounds all the others. Because once that gate is open, all the others could be compromised. It's like the gate that, you know, closed for all the other criteria for example a technology company uses multi-factor authentication as a, as a, for a security purposes firewalls and through intrusion detection system to prevent unauthorized access to its network and to protect its system from data cyber threats so if security is compromised forget about the others so security is important the security category is typically a central focus in most trust services engagement because both organizations and their stakeholder like customers, business partners, heavily rely on technology. So if security is compromised, forget about the others. We can say, we can fairly say that every SOC engagement will involve security. Okay, it's security plus something else, at least security, plus security and privacy, security and confidentiality, security and processing integrity. So this reliance brings increased concern about cybersecurity risk and their potential impact on the operational processes. Again, security, the point here is important. So given the critical importance of safeguarding data and system, security controls are usually prioritized in evaluation of system control. We hit them the most to make sure the system is secure because if the system is not secure, forget about the rest. Now, in rare circumstances where security category may not be explicitly addressed in an engagement, However, they, are, they, they, they may not be the main focus. 
it's still considered to some extent. So even though you might engage for privacy, okay, this could occur if the specific scope of the engagement and focus on other aspects like availability, processing, integrity, confidentiality. Depending on the particular need and risk profile of the organization, you still have to look at security because it has a foundational role in protecting information system. But generally speaking, when you have a TSC, security will be one of the criteria, one of the five. Why? Because it's fundamental to protect the others. Now let's talk about SOC engagement when it comes to cybersecurity. So the trust services criteria offer a flexible framework that can be applied to a variety of different audits or evaluation. Remember, you can pick and choose. And this flexibility allows practitioner to tailor the report to specific subject matter depending on the need of the entity. So one application of this, this criteria is an ASAC for cybersecurity engagement. So this is one of the key applications. Say it could be you could do SOC for cybersecurity, SOC for supply chain, just you, you because you can choose selected criteria and use them in, in a context that you want. So in such an engagement, a practitioner evaluate the effectiveness of the entity cybersecurity risk management program. The goal here is to determine whether the controls in place effectively support the entity's cybersecurity objective. Now, what are the main concerns for cybersecurity? The main three concerns in cybersecurity are security. As I told you, I mentioned several times already that security always kind of always present. So it's always easy to remember. Availability and confidentiality. Now, I don't know how you want to remember this. How you know SAC? SAC is the cybersecurity. So SOC, SOC, SAC. Okay, if you want to remember this, but it's up to you. I would say security, availability, and confidentiality. And we already defined availability and confidentiality as well as security. So these criteria serve as the basis for addressing how well the entity protects its system and information from unauthorized access, ensure system and data availability for operation and use, and maintain the confidentiality of sensitive information. What do I mean by this? For example, a practitioner might evaluate a financial institution cybersecurity program by reviewing its security. They would look at their firewall, intrusion detection system, as well as other criteria, other technology, its data backup, and disaster recovery processes to make sure they're available in case something happened, their system is available, and its data encryption practices for confidentiality, security, availability, confidentiality. In this comprehensive evaluation helps ensure that the institution cybersecurity measures align with the overall objectives and adequately protect its stakeholders. So if we want to just kind of summarize real quick, remember TSCs, trust service criteria, there are five of them. They apply to various scenarios. You know, the company wants to make an assertion, make a claim about their system, their information system. Why do you want to make this claim? Because they want to provide this information to the to their business partners. They want to make they they want to issue SOC two or SOC three. What is SOC three? SOC three is the public. So we're going to skip over SOC. We're going to talk about SOC three because we talked about SOC three. So they want to issue SOC two, and SOC two could be type one or type two. So they can en engage or ask the auditor to issue. You know, I'm going to always say type two. Issue a type two for SOC two report comment providing an opinion about the operating effectiveness of their TSCs trust services criteria so this is how trust service criteria fits into all of this let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com and a sock for cybersecurity engagement which trust services criteria might be most relevant well uh, which one must be most relevant? First, you need to know what are the trust services criteria. If you don't know those, then you won't be able to answer this question. So if you know the, the trust services criteria, which are security, availability, confidentiality, privacy, processing, integrity. Those are the five services criteria. So D is not one of them. I will take D out. C, economic efficiency, is not a trust service criteria. I will take C out. I'm left with A and B. If, although I don't remember, I'm on the exam and I don't remember... Is it security and availability for cybersecurity or is it confidentiality and privacy? If you are in any doubt, security always there. So it's security and availability. Actually, it's security, availability, and confidentiality. Remember SAC, but here security and availability might be most relevant. B is incorrect because privacy is not relevant to a cybersecurity engagement. It's security, availability, and 
confidentiality. What do you need to do? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional multiple choice questions. That's going to help you if you're studying for the CPA exam, information system, and controls. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. Farhat is always here to help. And good luck.